Yo, this is the Clockwork Pi Pico Calc. It's a Raspberry Pi Pico based DIY kit that you build yourself. After you finish the build and power it on for the first time, newer builds greet you with a bootloader menu. Right away, you're faced with your first big decision. Do you choose the retro vibe of MM Basic or the modern power of MicroPython? And that's a bigger deal than just picking a language. This choice really defines what you can do with the PicoCalc and how you do it. You'll see people say MM Basic is a waste of time, while others argue it's the simplest way to interact with the hardware. Well, I'm Jay Blanks, and in this video, we're going to break down the real differences between them. We'll look at how easy it is to get started with, what kind of projects you can build, and what skills you'll learn. Then you can figure out which one is right for you. Okay, before we crown a winner, let's meet our two contenders. First up in the retro corner, we've got MM Basic. If you select it from the boot menu, this is what you'll see, a blinking cursor. It's a modern take on the basic language that powered old school 8-bit computers like the Commodore and Atari. Its main claim to fame is that it's a completely self-contained environment. You literally power on the device and can immediately start coding, editing, and running programs no computer needed. It has the soul of a classic home computer where there's almost nothing between you and the machine. The PicoMite firmware, which runs MM Basic on the PicoCalc, was built specifically for microcontrollers with simple commands to control the screen, keyboard, and sensors right out of the box. It feels like the software and hardware were made for each other. And in the modern corner, the powerhouse, MicroPython, specifically in the form of the PicoWare firmware. Now, this isn't just a programming language, it's a complete operating system for your PicoCalc. It replaces the simple command prompts with a modern graphical interface, an app library, and powerful on-device development tools. Now, PicoWare takes MicroPython, which is a lean and mean version of Pico3, and builds a whole ecosystem around it right on the device. Its philosophy is to give you a modern app-driven experience that can tap into a giant worldwide community of code and libraries to build pretty much anything you can think of. It's your ticket into the bigger world of modern electronics. So we've got two totally different approaches. The all-in-one nostalgic vibe of MM Basic versus the modern muscle of PicoWare's MicroPython. So let the showdown begin. The first hour with a new gadget is everything. It can be a blast or a mountain of frustration. So which firmware gives you a better experience right out of the box? Let's start with MM Basic. You can use it as a calculator just by typing in print five minus one and then clicking enter. If you want to write a program, just type in edit and click enter. And you're in a basic on device editor. Then you can write your code, hit a function key to save and exit, and then type run and your program is off to the races. This loop of writing, running, and fixing your code all on the device itself is super satisfying and immediate. It really feels like you're talking right to the hardware. Now let's look at MicroPython with PicoWare. Now, PicoWare gives you a library of pre-installed apps, including an on-device code editor. You can launch the editor, write a Python script, save it, and it instantly appears in your app library ready to run. This gives you the same self-contained computer-free workflow as MM Basic, but with a more organized file-based system and a graphical user interface. And for more advanced work, you can still connect to an editor like Thani on your computer, but you don't have to. So for this round, while MM Basic wins for pure command line immediacy, PicoWare's MicroPython takes the trophy for combining that on-device freedom with a modern user-friendly interface that's easier for learning and keeping your files organized. 
Now, a tool is only as good as the community behind it. When you get stuck or need inspiration, where do you go? This is where the gap between MM Basic and MicroPython turns into a canyon. Now, MM Basic has a small but very dedicated and smart community. You'll mostly find them on specific forums like the Clockwork Pi forums or the Backshed. If you have a question about the PicoMic firmware on your PicoCalc, this is really your spot. You can even find old basic programs that have been updated for the PicoCalc, which is awesome for retro fans. But the resources are pretty limited. The documentation is mainly the official manual and finding ready-made code for a new sensor or a web service is tough. You'll often find yourself having to write everything from scratch, which can be a roadblock. Well, now let's talk about MicroPython. When you learn MicroPython, you're plugging into the entire global Python community, one of the biggest and most active programming communities in the world. For just about any problem you can imagine, there are probably thousands of tutorials Reddit and Stack Overflow posts and YouTube videos to help you. It's not just about getting help, it's about the mountains of pre-built libraries. Want to get weather from an online API? There's a library for that. Need to control a sensor or read from a GPS module? Someone has almost definitely written a library for it. And sites like GitHub are gold mines of MicroPython projects you can copy, learn from, and load as apps and PicoWare. The community is always making new libraries and drivers, so your PicoCalc can keep getting new powers over time. With MicroPython, you are standing on the shoulders of giants. Well, this round isn't really a fair fight. For the massive community, endless supply of libraries, and the bottomless pit of learning resources, MicroPython wins by a landslide. But when you're learning something new, you're also investing your time. So which of these gives you a better return on your investment? Well, let's be real. The skills you learn in MM Basic don't really transfer to the modern tech world. Basic is a historical language and MM Basic is a super niche version used on just a few specific microcontrollers. Literally every hour you spend mastering it is an hour you're not learning a language that will open doors for you. It's a fun trip into computing history and great for a retro hobbyist but professionally, it's a dead end. On the other hand, every moment you spend with MicroPython is a moment you spend learning Python. Python is one of the world's most in-demand languages used for web development, data science, AI, robotics, and IoT. The skills you build on your PicoCalc, like logic, data structures, and using libraries are directly useful for a tech career or bigger projects. So from the PicoCalc, you could move to a Raspberry Pi running full Python, then to building websites or machine learning models, all using the same core knowledge. Choosing MicroPython is about investing in yourself. You're not just learning to program a calculator, you're learning to speak the language of modern tech. For building skills that grow with you, MicroPython is the clear winner here. For a little battery powered device, speed matters. How fast can it crunch numbers or draw graphics? This is where the difference between an interpreted language like MM Basic and a highly optimized one like MicroPython really starts to show. Now, MM Basic reads one line of code at a time, figures out what it means, and then does it. This is simple, but it has a lot of overhead. For basic stuff, it feels fine, but when you ask it to do some real work, it starts to sweat. While even some simple loops are faster in MicroPython, the real story is with complex math and graphics. In benchmarks, testing heavy-duty math like sine and square root functions, MicroPython was found to be a mind-blowing 150 
eight times faster than MM Basic. Now, that's definitely not a small difference. For graphics, the gap is also huge. It's the difference between a game that runs smoothly and one that's an unplayable slideshow. It's the difference between analyzing sensor data instantly versus waiting several seconds for a single result. MicroPython gets this speed by compiling code into more efficient bytecode. It also has features that can make code run nearly as fast as lower level languages like C. And with its optimized drivers, MicroPython can handle complex animations and graphics much more smoothly than the slower routines in MMBasic. So if your projects are simple text apps or slow paced retro games, MMBasic's performance might be good enough. But if you want to build anything that needs speed, there's no contest. For raw power, MicroPython takes this final round, no question. So after four rounds, what's the final verdict? For the vast majority of users, especially beginners, I recommend going with PicoWare's MicroPython. While MMBasic is an interesting path for retro enthusiasts, for everyone else, it's really a detour. The choice that sets you up for long-term success and endless project ideas is MicroPython. For the die-hard retro fans that just love basic and are okay with some of the setbacks, MM Basic is for you. But for everyone else, PicoWare's MicroPython version is for you. Flash it and don't look back. And now I want to hear from you. What are you running on your PicoCalc? Are you Team MM Basic or Team MicroPython? Let me know in the comments which one you choose and what you're building with it. And if this guide helped you out, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. It's free and it only takes a second. And if you want to stay updated on upcoming PicoCalc projects, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. Choosing your firmware is the most important first step for your PicoCalc. By making the right choice now, you're not just setting up a device, you're starting a journey into the modern world of electronics. So I'm Jay Blanked. Thanks for watching. Peace.